Hello and welcome. I'm Raymond Modulin, a.k.a. The Real Estate Monkey, and welcome to my podcast today. Today I'm going to play a pre-recorded uh, interview with Colin Hedegaard. He's back one more time. He's got a little positive outlook about the market and what's coming out as we emerge from our stay-at-home order. So stick around. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Welcome back. I'm Raymond Modlin. I am the Real Estate Monkey, and thank you for joining us one more time. Um, today, we're going to be visiting again with our good friend Colin Hedegaard from Five Stones Mortgage. And uh, Colin, you and I were doing a little bit of talking, and I guess you've got some good news for us here in the late part of April. So uh, go ahead. Tell us what you, what's going on, man. Sure. Well, we're we're seeing some positive signs, and once again, thank you for having me on and and uh, chit chatting. I appreciate it a lot. Um, we're getting some very positive signs. We had uh, a couple of lenders have significant pricing improvements today, moving us much back towards where we were prior to the uh, stay home orders and so forth. And we had another lender ease their uh, rate lock. They had tightened up their rate lock rules a little bit. They eased those up uh, last night for us. So there's a lot of positive news and a lot of, of positive things happening in the mark, market right now. Um, so I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'm, I'm starting to feel excitement again. Do you think that that is an indication that the market is – believing that we are going to come off this restriction and things are heading back that way? I believe it is. I believe that uh, I, I think these states are going to start opening up slowly and smartly, and I think everyone realizes that that's going to happen. Uh, there will be some fuss and some states won't respond, you know, the same way. But overall, I think everybody's ready to go back to work, and I think it can be done in a smart way, and that's how – Things are being being rolled out. Uh, businesses will, you know, decide how they can do business. And right. and I think you and you and I are learning that we can still get a lot of things done in this environment. You know, we're we're, we're cooped up. They don't even want us at the closings, but we had a closing today. Now there's you know goofy stuff goes on right now, but um, we're, we're we're able to get things done and get through all the phases of a transaction without without trouble remotely well i want to get to some of that goofy stuff here in a minute because that's the kind of stuff that people like to hear some of these uh horror stories to make them feel a little bit better but before we do that do you think that this short blip and i'm going to call it short it seems like it's been friggin' forever that we have been locked up and you're in the bunker and i'm <laughs> up here in nashville but in the grand scheme of things it's four five six weeks this short blip will be recoverable this year? Well, I, I'm going to say we, we've been pretty fortunate. We were building up some momentum in our uh, – we've been in business for just over two years, and um, we've, we were building up some good momentum, and, I, and we really haven't lost that. We've lost a couple deals to people losing their jobs. Uh, we, we, you know, like I say, some goofy things, which we'll talk about next, but – well, we've been able to kind of maintain. Now we're a lagging indicator, as you know. So we're we're closing loans that were probably started right right before you know the the, the big issues yeah. of staying yeah. at home and the unemployment numbers. So I think over the next the next couple of weeks will tell us a little bit about how bad things could have been. But by May first, we're going to be open, and the market the market is never wrong. It sees the future, you know. So. Uh, I think the market is telling us that this is going to be a short blip. I think it's very recoverable for the for this industry. Um, one of uh, one of your agents publishes the the weekly transactions, and and so far it hasn't been really off pace. I don't know if you've been following that. Yeah. Um, Joel Joel Newman publishes them. I try to share them, but he publishes my board numbers. I think that's really wonderful that we've been within twenty or thirty transactions of. Um, you know, previous activity. So I just signed a new listing for Joel before we got on the air. So one of the things that you mentioned is something that I want to talk about to people out there that maybe don't really know is that we are a lagging indicator. 
and I get friends that I talk to on the phone and they're asking me like, so how's your business? And I'm like, we're still closing stuff. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, but you have to realize we're 30, 40, 50 days behind yeah. the times. And like you pointed out, we're closing stuff that probably went under contract right in that, you know, March the 10th to the March the 20th timeframe, right before we got hit with the stay at home. My concern is going to be for us is a month from now in that May time frame, will we <clears> then see a little bit of a dip because we didn't get things under contract in the first and middle of April, which is where we're sitting right now. So I, I think the intake has probably slowed a little bit for everyone. So right. yes, next May, May is going to be a concern and we're going to have the positive things of reopening combined with negative data from what is happening based yeah. on our activity today. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But ultimately I, I think that very soon we're going to be back to normal. And it, it, this, this blip may have helped some sell, uh, some buyers. Maybe they've negotiated. I've heard some national chatter that there's been some renegotiating of deals even before the closings, but after the contract. Now, I was shocked to hear that kind of stuff on the yeah. news, but other markets are different than ours. So I, I don't know if that business is going on in central Indiana, but I, I haven't seen it myself yet. I told one of my agents, they were talking about the same thing, you know, how fast the market was going. And I told him, I said, you know, even race car drivers put a brakes on every now and then. You know, you got to tap the brakes a little bit. Uh, otherwise, you're flying yeah. out of control. So maybe this is just a tapping of the brakes. All right. Well, so one other thing that you mentioned, I want to people you to share with for those out there because I think it's hysterical. You've experienced it two or three times. Is this new curbside closing that yeah. the title companies are doing? It reminds me of the old drive-ins. Now, I'm not that old. I don't remember, you know, the, the girls on skates and bringing the trays out. But, I mean, there are still Sonic and things like that. Uh, the old A&W root beer where they come out to your car and take your order and then bring you the food. And that's kind of exactly what we're doing with these curbside closings. And I know you said you did one. Yeah, we, we – well, I've had a couple now. You. I, I drove over there to make sure the client was happy. They were out sitting in their car with the window down and the agent was outside chit chatting and they basically brought the documents out in a big file folder. And then they called the client and they got on the phone and explained what each page was. And she went through and signed them and then they came back out and took them in. Now, I don't know how that helps other than we're not all in the same room breathing on each other because everybody's touching all the same stuff. But yeah. Yeah. it would, we were not all in the same room and we were not all breathing on each other and it worked fine. It was a little bit slower. Um, I'd say it took almost twice as long to wrap up, but it worked. So yeah. I, told, I told one of my agents today uh, in the, about the curbside closing. And the one thing I did say is now at some point they're going to have to pass the key. The sellers got keys. They're going to have to pass. So you may want to take, you know, some kind of antiseptic cloth. So when they hand you the key, you can take it with the mm. cloth and then wipe it off and give it to our client. So maybe uh, drop them in this glass of Clorox for me, please. <laughs> that would be cool. You walk up and go here. Just put that right there and uh, I'll get it in a minute. So well, you, it, the title companies is a good example of a business that has adapted to this environment. They, they're doing curbside closings. They're keeping people in separate rooms. Some of them have closed down all the offices except for maybe the more spacious offices to be able to be more efficient. And they're having people work from home that don't need to be in there for, yeah. for certain functions. So that's a good example of a business that can stay open, adapt in a smart way to protect their, their customers and the professionals that they, they interact with. I, I the one thing I do see and somebody posted on Facebook that I follow and uh, he, he put so what's the silver lining in this COVID-19 issue and I responded is the growth of technology 
because I think that there are a lot of companies out there that used to do things. Well, that's how we did it. And then now this has forced them to rethink their business model like this, that this evolution may even take another step forward into this. And you and I heard this mixed rumor for years about the uh, remote closings where, you know, you sit in the bunker and your client sits much like we're doing now yeah. and they do the closing without even driving to the curbside. Well, you've got to think that if they can do it at curbside, what's the difference between being out at the curb and the client sitting at their house? You know, I think you're, I think you're exactly right. I think that a number of companies, corporations, big and medium and, and all sizes are going to realize they actually figured out how to do business without having the need for a gigantic office. I, uh, you know, an office downtown, a high rise probably costs millions of dollars a month to operate. They're in business and they're still making money. Maybe things are different. Maybe it's not, it's a figuring out phase, but I, I can definitely see people working from home two or three days a week or more. I can see companies not deciding they don't need an office. We've yeah. maybe yeah. We've been doing FaceTime tours of the factory. We do not need to send you on a plane, put you in a hotel, and we don't need to do that. You can do it over a FaceTime. So uh, my, that my costs brother, us. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. They'll the say thousands of dollars. And you know something else, something else crazy, a financial advisor friend of ours, we were watching crude oil. It went below zero yesterday or the day before. It's the back. I don't, know it yeah, I don't know what it is now, 5 or $10 a bit. But there, we, our, our stockpiles are full. Nobody wants any gasoline. And if people work from home, let's say half the time, they, they're going to use half the gas they used to use going to work. And Tesla is building cars that run on batteries. And soon we'll have batteries that charge batteries. So who knows what – Maybe oil's over. This can yeah. change all. Kinds of, this could change all kinds of things in a big way. Um, the May's futures for petroleum was negative. I was watching the futures was yeah. below. Below, they were paying you to take the gas, basically. Well, the, this is going to cause a big ripple if if we, nobody wants any crude oil from places that sell it and and frankly need to sell it to survive. Those countries are going to have a big problem, and I worry a little bit. I worry a little bit politically that some of those countries have known to be a little bit crazy when they're desperate. So I'm I'm concerned about that. But the other adapt or die. The other silver, that, the other silver lining in this is that social distancing, because it does allow. <clears throat> things to happen if you're in your own house all right yes you know, there it is does. Some to this so um i do think that that's kind of advantageous for me here in uh chateau de modulin that has got a cigar room in the basement that allows me to do that so that <laughs> is an advantage so i heard i heard a comedian on on the radio today i, th I think it was a connie Stopamopoulos, he's on Bob and Tom occasionally. Castani. Castani. Yeah, he says, you know, the good thing about being uh, at home, you don't have to share anything. Yeah. So he, he was making some jokes about the COVID. And the other ones I won't repeat on, on the well, that, that on the other hand. <laughs> so you mentioned or you alluded to some maybe a downside to technology, though. So. Give us the story that you were talking about that is striking you right now. Oh, well, yeah, we had, we had a delay in a two, – two things caused the de delays this week. One was the one of the lenders now has a COVID-19 audit on certain files, which that started this week. So we had a closing schedule for Monday. This audit popped up. I didn't, I didn't even know they were doing that. The email was in my inbox at the same time it was happening. So that delayed us by a few hours and ended up, you know, 
causing a rescheduling issue because of the blockage of the schedule. So COVID-19 audit from a lender that was new and it was a curveball. The other thing was the title company had a technology issue today. So we had a closing in the morning. Excuse me, their their technology, uh, their their internal system failed them today. And the people that repair it are remote. So they were having a hard time breaking through security barriers and things to do do the necessary fix on their on their software so that we closed the loan and signed documents, but the money has not been released. So the sellers won't let the keys go till they have the money. So our borrower is going to have to unfortunately make a second trip to go get the keys when they, when they figure their system out. So that's an unfortunate thing. Break their own security. So I guess they learned something that their securities are pretty good because working remotely, they couldn't break into their own system. Well, I, I don't really know the details of how that works, but I, I like to think that since they have all those wires and money and everything, I'm sure their security level is high like ours. So. <clears throat> all right. So basically you're kind of on the up, upside and positive and think things were, are going to be going great. And we've got the sign from the investors and that interest rates are coming down. I think that's probably a good thing in the long run, right? I think it's very good. I think I think we're going to emerge from this with a really high demand, and it's going to. It, there's a lot of folks that were talking about refinancing, and rates were just re coming down ridiculously right before this happened, and a lot of people were kind of waiting. Maybe oh, let's see if we get another eighth of a percent. Well, then they got stuck in this bad zone for a month, and and as soon as rates re go back to normal, there's going to be a a month's worth of people that we talk to ready to pull the trigger and refinance them. I, I think yeah. that when we say now's the time, I, I think that they need to take that seriously because the market is going to, if we all go back to work, you know, all these stocks are undervalued tremendously if they return back to their normal levels of, of operation. So the market will be driven up and that will, that will drive rates a little bit upward. Uh, so at some point uh, later in the year. Speaking of stocks, uh, and this isn't a stock show, and please don't take this as financial advice, but I was watching Carnival Cruise Lines, and in the last year, they were as high as 50 or 52, and recently they were down to like 8, and I think they climbed back up to 11. And my guess is I'm rolling the dice and betting a little money here, that it's going to people get released. They're going to want to maybe go on vacation soon. I think that stock's going to come back a little bit, like you said, uh, and uh, maybe too. there's some money on the table for some people there. Well, everybody's been sitting at home. I mean, most, even though unemployment is high, 22 million, it's probably going to, who knows what it's going to reach over the next couple of weeks. But still, 80 or 85, 90 percent of Americans are working, getting paid, and we're all sitting on our, you know what's, with full tanks of gas, and we can't leave and go spend money on anything. We're going to get a stimulus check in the mail, some of us, are, and you know, we got to do something when they when they open the doors. <laughs> we got to yeah. get out of these houses. So I, I think you're right. Even if they get back to half operation, uh, a stock at twenty six dollars. If you bought it at eight and it goes to 26 in six months, that's, you know, what is that? 300 some percent in six months. That's good. Yeah. I, I think that's going to happen. And ironically, gas is at the lowest it's ever been that, you know, in the last 20 years, <laughs> but so is my driving, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've still got the same tank of gas that I started yeah. with. I think I filled up like that March the 20th or something. I've still got the same tank in my car. So I got the same uh, thing. I, I think we're at a half a tank after a month. I filled it up at the, you know, it was a buck 50. And I somewhere now. just to get cheap gas. Yeah. Hey, hey right. get your credit, get your credit points. It might be less than a dollar. Yeah, that's true. Anything, any final comment, words of wisdom, sir? Yeah. You know, the, the only words of wisdom I have is just to, you know, Take care of yourselves and, and be smart. And as we reemerge, uh, 
you know, talk, talk to professionals. If you've got questions about, uh, about things, you know, talk to uh, Raymond or somebody on his team and just emerge in a smart way, but, you know, let's keep business moving. Let's get back to work. All right. So you think that potentially there's going to be a refi boon and obviously you can do the refi. So how can someone get a hold of you if they've got a question or <clears throat> interested in maybe starting the process or thinking about so that they can be ready? Sure. The the easiest way to reach me would be to go to the fivestonesmortgage.com website, number five stones mortgage, and you can get information there. You can send us a message. Uh, you can also apply right there online. If you scroll there, you're ready to go and want to see what we can do for you. The apply now button is going to open a secure server, create an account, fill in the blanks. You can do it on a phone, iPad, whatever, and uh, we can get you answers within a, probably a few hours. Uh, of what things look like for you. So, yeah, thank you. All right. I want to thank Colin for uh, another genius round of advice. And uh, maybe we'll try and visit you again in a couple more days, uh, maybe after that February the 1st, to see where we're at with the market and what's going on. Uh, is that If that's okay with you, well, I know you're yeah, going to be down in the bunker. <clears throat> as soon as they tell me I can leave the bunker, I'll be out. But otherwise, I'm in the bunker working. So. All right. Hey, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. And once again, I'm Raymond Modulin and the Real Estate Monkey. You can find me at realestatemonkey.com or check it out on Facebook. Check out Colin at fivestonesmortgage.com. That's the number five stonesmortgage.com. And you can send him an email or apply to them. And uh, we'll see you in a little bit. See you later. Bye. All right, so that's my interview with Colin. He had some good words of encouragement as to what's coming up in the future. I hope you liked it, and I'd like to remind you to like me on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash realestatemonkey, or give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. I'll see you next week. We've got another exciting guest coming up. And once again, I'm the Real Estate Monkey. Peace out.